Hello, everyone. I am Charlotte Cabral, a graduate student from De La Salle University, Manila, Department of Chemical Engineering, and I'm going to present our team's research paper entitled Life Cycle Assessment of Single Use and Reprocess Face Mask Using UVC Radiation. So this is the outline of our presentation for the introduction. So the COVID-19 pandemic has pushed for the exponential increase in the global demand of face masks, which is estimated at 1.130 billion per month, as per the research study of Pinto in 2021. And it was reported that 52 billion disposable face masks was produced last 2020, and 1.56 billion of those ended up in our marine, uh, in our ocean, which, threat, which threatened marine life and ecosystem. So to address this issue, life cycle assessment was conducted under a usable face mask, which face mask, which has a disinfection step such as washing, steam sterilization, or microwave disinfection before reuse, and does also require additional input in the life cycle. So previous study shows that washable cotton mask performs slightly better than disposable face mask in terms of the carbon footprint and energy. However, it underperformed in terms of the water footprint. There's also a hospital study which compared uh, 3M face mask uh, disinfected via steam Steam sterilization, which is reused five times, versus the disposable face mask, and showed that the reused face mask has a lower carbon footprint at 2.77 kilogram CO2 equivalent footprint versus 6.55 for the disposable face mask. Further study also from Rodriguez and colleagues in 2021 using uh, five different face masks, which two out of which are reusable and disinfected by alcohol and washing. And it has concluded that the reusable counterparts were the most sustainable option with a drastic reduction in environmental impact across all categories. There is also a newer disinfection technique, which is the ultraviolet or the UVC radiation. So the UVC radiation is effective in airborne pathogens using a wavelength of 222 nanometer and surfaces take only 10 seconds for the contamination. So this, the disinfection test on N95 masks using open source uh, UVC device called Lucia, the image on the right, is capable of reducing the viral load by four times in magnitude. For the research gap, so far there's no study have been found comparing the carbon footprint of disposable face mask versus the reusable face mask disinfected using the UVC through LCA. In the Scopus database, when you search the keyword LCA face mask in UVC, it will yield zero results. So to address this research gap, so this study aims to compare the carbon footprint of disposable face mask and reusable face mask disinfected using UVC to LCA. So the objective is to assess and compare the environmental impact in terms of the carbon footprint through life cycle assessment of the disposable versus the reprocessed face mask using UVC radiation without compromising its protective capability against the virus. So this work also addresses the current research gap on the comparative environmental impact using different method, which is the UV radiation. So this study also aims to guide decision makers in shifting to other alternatives of single-use face masks with minimal environmental impact in regards to carbon footprint, environmental, and human toxicity. So for the methodology, so for the scope of this study, we limited it to four scenarios, namely the important face mask, the imported N95 face mask with the UVC disinfection, imported FPP2 face mask with disinfection, and the locally sourced cotton mask with the UVC disinfection. So the first three scenarios are imported face mask and the last one is locally sourced. So the main difference of this mask are the respective components and weights of these components in the final product. So in terms of the efficacy, the first three masks are proven to have 95% and above efficient in filtering bacteria where the cotton mask is only up to 80, 83% efficient. For the system boundaries, so we have the cradle to gate instead of cradle to grave approach as we are lacking data on the disposable, on the disposal or the end of life of this mask. So for scenario one, as you can see the material sourcing and the production occurs in China, while the final product is used in the Philippines as single source face mask, single use face mask. For scenarios two and three, the material sourcing and production also occurs in China and the final product is used on, in the Philippines and there's additional step which is the disinfection for the reuse of face mask. For the fourth scenario, the material sourcing and production occurs in the Philippines as it is locally made, specifically from Benguet. As you can see in the pictures, these are beautiful cotton masks from Benguet, Philippines. 
and the usage also of course in the Philippines and there's also a disinfection step as well. So how did we define the reuse of, or the reprocessing of face masks in terms of numbers? So we base our calculation on the study of Van Inselten and colleagues. So our functional unit is 100 uses. So obviously for scenario one, which is the single use surgical mask, 100 masks are needed for the 100 uses. On the other hand, for the face mask with the UVC disinfection, given the disinfection rate or the rejection rate in disinfecting masks using UVC is 13% from literature and a limit of five consecutive uses. So what does this mean? So it means that, for example, you start with 23 masks as in the table. Only 87 of these uh, 23 masks can undergo disinfection because the rest or the 13% are damaged or any other reason why, why it can't be used. So that is why in the first round out of 23 masks, only 20 can be reused and so on and so forth. And since there is a limit of five consecutive uses, so based on literature, well, we ended up on these numbers. So we actually did a calculation from the functional unit of 100 uses for how much initial, initial face mask do we need. So the next step uh, is the life cycle inventory. So all of our data are based on the published literature. So using echo invent database, we build the flows and processes for each of the different masks. As much as possible, we selected the same echo invent items and providers with the literature. However, since we only use the educational uh, license in case there's no exact same item, so we have we made a substitution based on engineering judgment. So this slide shows for the single use surgical mask N95, FPP2, and the locally source face mask. For the transportation, so we, all, we also included the transportation data. Since, as mentioned, the first three, masks are, first three masks are from China, specifically from Sushu, China. So using Google Maps, we obtained the distance and we assume that transport is via sea. So next, we calculated the distance from the Manila port to De La Salle University through land trans transportation, since we assume that the final user and the disinfection unit is located in Del SU. So that is for scenarios one to three. So for scenarios four, which is locally sourced from Benguet, we obtain the distance between Benguet and DLSU through land, land transportation. So we assume those distances to, we use those distances, distances to calculate the freight, which is the distance multiplied by the weight. So for the UVC equipment, so UVC radiation are effective in destroying pathogens such as viruses. So the image on the right is the general view and the main components of the UV equipment. So the following are the basis and the assumptions we use for the disinfection of face mask by one unit of the UV equipment. So first is the electricity. So the electricity requirement in running the equipment was obtained from the study of Bentan Core in 2021 using the three UVC lamps with 30 watts rating each. Second is the disinfection time. So we have used 30 seconds disinfection time per batch of face masks that will be uh, resulting in 99.7 reduction in viral load as per the study conduct conducted by Itagawa in 2021. Third is that only four face masks can be accommodated per disinfection batch. And lastly, the lifespan of one UV lamp is approximately 9,000 hours. So with this, we calculated the number of face masks that can be disinfected by this equipment, which is a total of 4.3 face masks. So to achieve the functional unit of 100 uses of face masks, the LCI for the UVC equipment will be divided by 4.3 million and will be multiplied by a factor of 77, which is the number of face masks that will undergo the disinfection process, which is the accumulative uh, number of reprocessed face masks for scenarios two to four. So the succeeding table shows the uh, LCI for the UVC equipment used based on the LCA study of Lee and others in 2012. So we have chosen the impact categories such as the climate change, human toxicity, freshwater echo, freshwater aquatic echo toxicity, marine life uh, aquatic echo toxicity. So for the life cycle assessment, which refers to its impact calculation for 100 years. So the impact assessment method we use is CML uh, 2001 using the software OpenLCA version 1.10.3. So further investigation was made on the climate change impact category by analyzing the contribution of each step in the total impact. Of course, the sensitivity analysis. 
So using the climate change impact category, sensitivity analysis was conducted on the best performing face mask or scenario to check the changes on the output based on the changes on the input. So the variation in the rejection percentage and the UVC equipment capacity were investigated. For the rejection percentage, we have a baseline of 13% and higher rejection rate of 20 and 30% were compared with this baseline study. So for the UVC equipment capacity, the baseline scenario assumes that 4.3 million face masks can be disinfected in the lifetime of the UVC equipment. So however, possible maintenance and breakdown of the equipment were not considered, hence we reduced the capacity to 3 million and 1 million. For the results in discussion, so for the impact analysis, so this figure shows the result of the impact analysis considering the different impact categories. So the different color shows the different scenarios. So as we can see in the figure, scenario two has the lowest impact while scenario four has the highest impact across all categories. So we can see that scenario two for the UVC reprocessed imported N95 face mask is our best case scenario while the UVC reprocessed locally sourced cotton mask is the worst case scenario. So the better performance of the reprocessed N95 and FPP2 over single use surgical mask agrees with the result of other studies which reprocess face mask using steam distillation and using manual or machine washing. Hence, we can say that the UVC reprocessing is a good alternative as disinfection technique. So another observation is that for quadrants one to three, the trend is more or less similar where in the difference in the impact of scenario four from the other three scenarios are, is big. But for the marine ecotoxicity category, somehow scenarios one and three are catching up with scenarios four. Now let's look on the contribution by step from the mass manufacture, transportation, and the UVC disinfection, focusing on the climate change impact category. So as we can see from the graph, the main source of the carbon footprint is from the mass manufacture. So only a small amount is attributed to the transportation and the contribution from the UVC disinfection is almost negligible. So for the transportation, even with the big difference in distance between the imported and locally sourced face masks, the difference in the impact due to the tra transportation is not that big based on the figure. One way to look at this is that the material and manufacturing matters more than the distance in this case. So another important observation is that the insignificant impact of the UVC disinfection step. So we can say that the UVC seems to be a desirable disinfection method due to its low impact. However, the type of face mask is still is the biggest effect on the overall performance. Now let us zoom on the five contributors in the climate change category by comparing the best and worst case scenario. So th the top contributors in our best case scenario is from po polypropylene production, synthetic rubber production, sea transport, electricity, and the polyethylene production. And these contributors are from the manufacturing and transportation steps. For the worst case scenario, the top contributors is from cotton production compared to uh, and compared to cotton production, the rest of the contributors are actually lagging behind. So despite being locally sourced and under undergoing reprocessing, the high impact of the cotton raw material has affected the overall performance of the cotton mass. So this is because the cotton requires agricultural land, significant quantities of water, chemical fertilizers, and pesticides to grow, resulting in pesticide and long-term heavy metal emission. Actually, only 33% of the harvested cotton is usable cotton, which undergo further processing that are energy and water intensive and involves chemical for washing, bleaching, dyeing, and printing. So for the impact, cotton has uh, is a high impact material compared to other materials. So for the sensitivity analysis that we conducted for the alternative scenarios, we assume that the bacterial contamination re reduction is lowered from 87 to 80 and 70% corresponding to 20 and 30% reduction rate. There is a little increase in the overall impact as this would also mean that there is an increase in the number of face masks that needs to be manufactured. Still, this slight increase is still small compared to the overall impact of the single use face mask. When we assume that the capacity of this infection equipment is lowered, so there is also little to no change from the baseline value on the climate change impact. For the conclusion and um, future work, so the worst case scenarios with the highest impact is utilizing the locally sourced cotton mask with the UVC disinfection. So from this, we can, we can conclude that despite it being locally sourced, the impact of cotton manufacture remains the biggest contributor. The transportation distance also has little to no effect compared to other face masks that are still imported. 
In addition, the impact of reprocessing via UVC disinfection also has little to no uh, significant impact because the best case scenario is still reprocess, reprocess mask and N95 face mask. For, from our sensitivity analysis for the best case scenario, we also know that even when bacterial contamination and the capacity of the UVC equipment are reduced, the overall all impact of utilizing single-use face masks is still very high compared to the reprocess N95 masks at, at these alternative scenarios. In this study, we also further proved that the UVC is, the robust, is a robust disinfection method for the face mask. For the future work, so we recommend to look into impact of alternative material for the locally sourced face mask. It, it would also be good to consider other configuration and operation of the UVC equipment considering potential cost for its large scale application. And it is worthwhile to consider the end of life scenarios for a cradle to grave approach. And lastly, this study could be further developed with a multi criteria decision analysis when criteria like environmental impact, social acceptability, efficient, efficacy, cost are considered to further guide decision makers in adapting the UVC as disinfection method. So thank you for your attention.